السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ گڈ بائی مسٹر چپس ریٹن بائی جیمز ہلٹن چیپٹر ٹو ریڈ بائی محمد افضل فار سیکنڈ ایئر اسٹوڈنٹس اکراس دا روڈ بہائنڈ اے ریمپرٹ آف اینشنٹ ایلمز لے بروک فیلڈ رسٹ انڈر اٹس آٹم مینٹل آف کریپر اے گروپ آف ایٹین سینچری بلڈنگ سینٹرڈ upon a quadrangle and there were acres of playing fields beyond then came the small dependent village and the open fun country brookfield as weatherby had said was an old foundation established in the reign of elizabeth as a grammar school it might with better luck have become as famous as harrow its luck However, had not been so good, the school went up and down, dwindling almost to non-existence at one time, becoming almost illustrious at another. It was during one of these later periods, in the reign of the first George, that the main structure had been rebuilt and large additions made. Later, after the Napoleonic Wars, and until mid victorian days the school declined again both in numbers and repute whether by who came in 1840 restored its fortune somewhat but its subsequent history never raised it to front rank status it was nevertheless a good school of the second rank several notable families supported it it supplied fair samples of the history making men of the age judges members of parliament colonial administrators a few peers and bishops mostly however it turned out merchants manufacturers and professional men with a good sprinkling of country squires and parsons It was the sort of the school which when mentioned would sometimes make snobbish people confess that they rather thought they had heard of it. But if it had not been this sort of school it would probably not have taken chips. For chips in any social or academic sense were just as respectable but no more brilliant than Brookfield itself. It had taken him some time to realize this at the beginning, not that he was boastful or conceited, but he had been in his early twenties as ambitious as most other young men at such an age. His dream had been to get a headship eventually, or at any rate a senior mastership in a really first class school. It was only gradually, after repeated trials and failures, that he realized the inadequacy of his qualifications. His degree, for instance, was not particularly good, and his discipline, though good enough and improving, wasn't absolutely reliable under all conditions. He had no private means and no family connection of any importance. About 1880, after he had been at Brookfield a decade, he began to recognize that odds were heavily against his being able to better himself by moving elsewhere. But about that time also, the, pro the possibility of staying where he was began to fill a com comfortable niche in his mind. At 40, he was rooted, settled and quite happy. At 50, he was the doyen of the staff. At 60, under a new and youthful head, he was Brookfield. the guest of honor at old brookfieldian dinners the court of appeal in all matters affecting brookfield history and tradition and in 1913 when he turned 65 he retired was presented with a check and a writing desk and a clock and went across the road to live at mrs wickets a decent career decently closed three cheers for old chips 
they all shouted at that uproarious end of term dinner three cheers indeed but there was more to come an unguessed epilogue an encore played to a tragic audience end of chapter 2 read by mohammad afzal for second year students